Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Samuel and I want to make self-growth normal. If you want to make self-growth normal, because I don't want to do it alone, and who doesn't want to make self-growth normal, then make sure to smash that like button. I, I want to clear something up. But first, despite what I'm about to say, I want to say that I did enjoy this book. And I think that's a reason it's so popular. It's just a solid book. But I think putting this word in a title is just... I, I don't get it. It's not cool anymore after Mark Manson does it. I'm not saying you can't do it, but like, I don't know, the more people do it, the more I'm just not impressed when it happens. And that doesn't mean I don't like the book, it just means that I don't like the title. When someone does this to the title of their book, it just says to me, everyone who knows about this book needs to know that this was such a choice for me that I simply couldn't come up with anything else. Creativity doesn't need to be natural. The examples in these pictures are just of very popular books with cursing in their titles. I wouldn't say that they're popular because of their titles. I don't know what motivates people to put, put these words in their book titles, but think of how many books like this no one ever hears about. Please come up with something different because the title of your book is far more likely, correct me if I'm wrong, to be what gets people to check it out than to be what gets people recommending it to their friends and colleagues. What gets them to recommend it to their friends and colleagues, you ask? Simple. The book's contents. In this review, I'm going to talk about the, 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 the intro and outro, uh, and in between, of course, the seven different assertions. If it sounds like I'm in the middle of having a panic attack or I'm like tweaking on meth or something, it's probably because I just worked out and I'm sweating. And then I'm going to talk about a huge problem that I noticed with books like this. And then I'm going to talk about what to do about that problem if you are struggling with it. Positive self-talk has been shown to improve focus, mood, confidence, and more. The opposite of that is also true. Why is this a big deal? This is a big deal because studies have shown we have over 50 thousand thoughts every day. Isn't that insane? You actually talk to yourself about the most random things. The author in the beginning of the book is like, I really just, uh, affirmations have been beaten to death by so many of these books. And then he goes on to talk about seven different assertions that will help you get out of your head and into your own life. What are affirmations and assertions? Let's look at this because most people who know, who claim to know a lot about things I'm not claiming that I know a lot about things. The more I learn, the more I realize that I don't know and probably never will. An assertion is a positive declaration or averment, averment. I mean, like I said, I, there are so many things that I don't know. <laughs> Affirmation is a declaration that something is true. They are both some form of declaration. So the first assertion is I am willing. I am willing to step up and lose this weight for good. I am unwilling to stay in a job I hate. I mean, don't these sound like affirmations? When you think of affirmations, don't you think of stuff like I am? The author explains why these are effective in a way that makes so much sense that you're probably more likely to understand it than any other explanation uh, that I've heard of in any other book that I've reviewed so far. And I've reviewed what? Like a hundred, I think 130 books now in the last like eight, nine months. The second assertion is I am wired to win. Get it into your head that you are a winner. Even if you're a loser, you constantly win at losing. And a really big reason for this, based on probably the rest of this review so far is, you guessed it, negative self-talk. I'm a loser, so I'm gonna wait till the last minute to get all of my homework done. Okay, bro, no harm, no foul. It's always a good idea to get all of your homework done, at least. But if you wait till the last minute to do it and you spend all of the other minutes doing something that is not more important than homework, what is fundamentally stopping you from not wasting that time other than negative self, fundamentally negative self-talk? I mean, if you did that at this point, you'd have more homework done than you can keep up with. The third assertion, I've got this. Do these sound repetitive? Well, a lot of them have retrospection and introspection in common with each other. Like this guy brings up so many negative experiences of the past and oddly in a way that doesn't really sound negative, which is kind of impressive. And I was listening to this book and I don't know, in some ways you could consider it just kind of like another motivation manifesto. There are so many things in this book that I feel like I haven't exactly heard before. A good bulk of them were at the end of each chapter summarizing it. Assertion number four, I embrace the uncertainty. He talks about something that I don't think I've heard much about before other than in Nassim Taleb's books, which are, to say the least, a little bit complicated to understand. It's that when things all seem okay, and everything is all perfect, 
that is when you most need the attitude of everything's falling apart and I need to be prepared. If this is not true, thousands of years after Stoic philosophers popularized it, if this isn't true during this whole COVID-19 situation, I don't know what is. The only thing that is certain is that everything will have a degree of uncertainty that you simply cannot avoid. In assertion number five, I am not my thoughts, I am what I do. It is said, a lot of things are said in here, and all of these, but that if you attack the task at hand, always, without hesitation, how likely do you think you are over time at some point to just stop in your tracks and overthink everything? Athletes call this being in the zone, and you don't need to be an athlete to be in the zone. Ted Bundy once said to get your head in the game. That's probably not something Ted Bundy would really say. I don't imagine him, unless you know, like, cut your head off and throw it into the game. <laughs> so unpleasant to think about. What stood out in number six, I am relentless. The other people in your life have gotten used to relating to you as a specific kind of person. I've related to this uh, so much in the last couple of years. So anytime you attempt to break out of the mold, you're not only messing with your own world, you're also messing with theirs. I think the most common fear of asserting ourselves with these affirmations is that we don't realize that taking seriously and listening to the opinions of others is a choice. An opinion, no matter whose opinion it is, it's only true whether or not you accept it as true. I mean, in terms of practicality. In Assertion 7, I expect nothing and accept everything. You know, there are a lot of stoics, stoic moments in this book. Well, things happen, whatever. I'm already, I'm already going after it anyway. You ever hear this whole, I have very low expectations because that way when something goes wrong, I won't be very disappointed. In my experience, this may not sound like a good idea, but that's where having high hopes on top of those low expectations does help a ton. Accepting everything is taking responsibility for what happens and facing it squarely. Overall, are these assertions the same? Is this another book with just cursing in the title? Is it a motivation, a motivation manifesto? Well, talking about, you know, expectations and then talking about how your actions lead or, or can lead your thoughts in a more constructive direction than they would go otherwise, I would argue these assertions, affirmations, whatever you want to call them, they're not really the same thing. But I would also argue that they do fall under the same theme of getting out of your head and getting into your life. And after the assertions, the author in the conclusion has a bunch of straight talk as if there isn't enough through the affirm the assertions, that assertions, affirmations in their summaries. I mean, all of those on top of the beginning and the end, they kind of paint it as this motivation manifesto. And what is the point of getting a book like this? We'll talk about that a little bit later in the review. If you get this book, a good idea would be to write all of these down. There are seven of them and memorizing them so that you can apply whichever one fits most in the situation you're in that you would, where you would need to hear them. I haven't done this with this book, but I've done it with similar, I mean, chances are to some degree I probably have, but I've done it with similar books to the T. But I think this is one of those books that is checked out by a person who will get into this fog of reading a bunch of different books and watching a bunch of different videos and absorbing all of this information and never applying really any of it. If this is you, what you need to do is find one book. Just one. One book. This is so simple. That will help you out with the most, with the biggest challenge in your life right now. And read it over and over and over and over and over and over again to the point where its contents are basically like deeply etched into your soul. And you literally find yourself acting on their accord out of habit. I've done this with a handful of books, but the one I definitely recommend most is Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. No matter your situations, other recommendations based on your situation, just message me about it on Instagram. My profile link is at the bottom of the description of this video, and I'll help you find a direction to go in. I'm not gonna sell you any this course or anything. Instagram has more than enough people out doing that. For my sake, all I really care about is just continuous support, watching my videos the more they come out, and smashing that like button in case you haven't already for the YouTube algorithm. Just as if not more importantly for your sake, all I care about is that you're improving yourself. Reject your own sense of injury and the injury itself disappears. That little mess can influence all areas of your life until your emotions surrounding that one area become the one lens through which you see everything. At any moment of decision, the best thing you can do is the right thing. The next best is the wrong thing and the worst you can do is nothing. Direction one. I recommend this book 
more than anything for someone who is just getting into self-help. They're saying, you know, I want my life to be better, but I have absolutely like all of these like seven habits of highly effective people and think and grow rich. These books, I've tried with reading them or listening to them and they're just super boring. I don't blame you. Think and Grow Rich is my favorite book ever. Without a doubt, I've listened to it without exaggeration probably over 30 times. And the first two times I was like, <sighs> This book by Gary John Bishop is just extremely basic in a very accessible way. Like, I, th I mean that in a good way. Direction two, if you like this book, check out Braving the Wilderness by Brene Brown. The chapter about embracing uncertainty in this book really reminded me a lot of different things in that one. It's less basic, but it is still incredibly accessible for so many different reasons. All of Brene Brown's work that I've listened to at least is. I recommend that and on the motivational side, I mean, the 10x rule by Grant Cardone is like a knockout. Like that is a total game changer. There's nothing corny like at all at all in 10x rule. That dude is a freak and I would probably recommend that book over any other in terms of motivation. Un Luck Yourself <laughs> by Gary John Bishop. I, I try not to curse in these videos because honestly Google AdSense revenue is actually higher when you don't curse in your videos I found out and my goal my top goal this year is to become a YouTube partner if you check out my Instagram stories I curse a lot in those maybe one day I'll just start cursing in my videos again but there's a link in the description of this book if you want to check it out and read the reviews that and all the other books that I mentioned in this video if you want to check those out too if there are any other books that you guys want me to check out and review please let me know in the comments below and also let me know if you checked out this book and you liked it but hey Make sure to smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, because I don't get why people want, they watch all the way over to this point in my reviews and they don't subscribe, but if you have subscribed and you want to turn it up just a notch and turn on that notification bell to receive a notification every time I drop a new video, that would mean the world to me. Thank you guys so much for watching, I really appreciate it. You can find me everywhere and I will see you then.